Good morning and welcome to the worship of God here at Westminster. It is good to have you join us in worship wherever you come from. We want to invite you to offer your prayer requests via Facebook and those will be included later in the service. And I want to remind you that next week we will be observing the Lord's Supper and so we invite you to uh, make sure you have the elements prepared for next week's observation of the Lord's Supper. Let us unite in the call to worship. Blessed is God who hears our prayers, whose steadfast love endures forever. God calls us to proclaim the good news. Let us open our hearts to hear God's word. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy that increasing cause for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it, mount of God's unchanging love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I've come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the folds of God, he to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be. Let that grace now, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. in order that we might be raised to new life with him through faith in the power of God. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sin. Let us unite in the prayer of confession. Almighty God, you have raised Jesus from death to life and crowned him Lord of all. We confess that we have not bowed before him or acknowledged his rule in our lives. We have gone along with the ways of the world and failed to give him glory. Forgive us and raise us from sin, that we may be your faithful people, obeying the commands of our Lord Jesus Christ, who rules the world and is head of the church, his body. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Hear these words of assurance. This is the message we have heard from God and proclaim to you that God is light and in God there is no darkness at all. If we walk in the light as God is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. And as a forgiven people, hear this call to faithfulness. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, 
any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy. Make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo, Gloria, Gloria, Alleluia, Alleluia. Let us unite in the prayer for illumination. God most high, reigning in glory, send down your spirit of wisdom to shine in your heavenly word so that we may worship you with joy, continually blessing your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our scripture reading for today is the entire book of Jude, a small letter that comes right near the end of the New Testament. Hear the word of God. Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to those who are called, who are beloved in God the Father and kept safe for Jesus Christ, may mercy, peace, and love be yours in abundance. 
Beloved, while eagerly preparing to write to you about the salvation we share, I find it necessary to write an appeal to you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to the saints. For certain intruders have stolen in among you, people who long ago were designated for this condemnation as ungodly, who pervert the grace of our God into licentiousness and deny our only Master and Lord, Jesus Christ. Now I desire to remind you, though you are fully informed, that the Lord who once for all saved a people out of the land of Egypt afterward destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels who did not keep their own position but left their proper dwelling, he has kept in eternal chains in deepest darkness for the judgment of the great day. Likewise, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities, which in the same manner as they indulged in sexual immorality and pursued unnatural lust, serve as an example by undergoing a punishment of eternal fire. Yet in the same way, these dreamers also defile the flesh, reject authority, and slander the glorious ones. But when the archangel Michael contended with the devil and disputed about the body of Moses, he did not dare to bring a condemnation of slander against him, but said, The Lord rebuke you. But these people slander whatever they do not understand, and they are destroyed by those things that, like irrational animals, they know by instinct. Woe to them, for they go the way of Cain, and abandon themselves to Balaam's error for the sake of gain, and perish in Korah's rebellion. These are blemishes on your love feast, while they feast with you without fear, feeding themselves. They are waterless clouds carried along by the winds, autumn trees without fruit, twice dead, uprooted, wild waves of the sea, casting up the foam of their own shame, wandering stars for whom the deepest darkness has been reserved forever. It was also about these that Enoch, in the seventh generation from Adam, prophesied, saying, See, the Lord is coming with ten thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment on all and to convict everyone of all the deeds of ungodliness that they have committed in such an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things that ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are grumblers and malcontents. They indulge their own lusts. They are bombastic in speech, flattering people to their own advantage. But you, beloved, must remember the predictions of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. For they said to you, in the last time there will be scoffers indulging their own ungodly lust. It is these worldly people, devoid of the Spirit, who are causing divisions. But you, beloved, build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Look forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. And have mercy on some who are wavering. Save others by snatching them out of the fire. And have mercy on still others with fear, hating even the tunic defiled by their bodies. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to make you stand without blemish in the presence of his glory with rejoicing. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. Here ends the reading of the text. We invite you all to offer up your prayer requests on Facebook, and we will include them later during our prayers of the people. Let us now pray. Gracious God, as we come to your word, 
shape us by what we learn. Remind us of your intention for us, of your holiness, of your righteousness, of your love and your glory. And may we be persuaded by your word to us to follow more faithfully. It is in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. In a small book called The Great Divorce, C.S. Lewis talks about a bus trip that takes place between heaven and hell. The bus gathers up interested participants from down below and takes them up to the heavenly realm. And up in the heavenly realm, they find it hard to fit in. There's a lot of jostling to get in line, even though there's plenty of room on the bus. The driver is cheerful and pleasant, but those who ride on the bus seem to constantly quarrel with one another. It is Lewis's suggestion that perhaps hell is getting what you want. And those who populate the place are those who have no longer any desire to want things that are good, either for themselves or for another. And consumed by their selfishness, they find it impossible to reach beyond themselves and to touch God's grace or to be moved by the beauty of the place that they have entered, to be astonished by the wonder of the heavenly realm all those things are beyond them as they are so used to getting the thing that they want which is no longer good or wholesome or useful for them. In this passage, in this book from Jude that we read today, we hear lots of words of judgment and lots of concern about false teachers that have fallen into the ranks of the church that have led it astray and that offer things that are not substantive in place of the faith. The story is tricky as you read it because there are so many allusions to texts that we no longer read. There's a quotation from the book of First Enoch. There's a reference to a text called the Assumption of Moses, which was a popular discussion of Satan contending for the soul of Moses, because after all, he was a murderer. And the archangel Michael somehow interceding and making sure that Moses' soul is taken up into heaven. These odd allusions don't diminish the overall concern of the book with false teachers having come among us. If we look at civil religion in the United States, we discover there is plenty of falsity to it. We discover that our religion is more concerned with us than with the world as a whole. And yet we know that God loves the world, and yet somehow we think God ought to love us in the United States even more. God bless America. Well, how about God bless everybody? That'd be okay and should be okay. And even as we pray for ourselves, and we certainly need to do that, maybe we should remember that if we become exclusively focused on ourselves, we lose our way. We miss what it is that God would have for us. And it's a religion in the United States that says accumulation is the goal above all else. The more you have, the better off you are. The one with the most toys wins. And so that false teaching burrows into our heads every time there's an ad, every time there's some little newfangled thing put before us it's amazing, amazing to see uh, how quickly we can be led astray by false teaching. And the concern 
or Jude is that people abandon that kind of truth and instead pursue things that are simply indulgences. And these cause us to lose our way. Um, that's a, a powerful concern. I was thinking about um, the reality that um, there is tampering by foreign countries into our social media that seeks to influence the election. It's out there and misinformation, things that are untrue, is uh, thrown to us all the time. And many people seek to deceive citizens of this country to present things that are untrue in hopes that disharmony, lack of unity, uh, chaos in our social order will make us a weaker opponent on the world stage. Well, this is truly an appalling reality, but we all have the power to deal with it, which is by simply ignoring all that stuff, by staying away from it, by not signing on to the various ways that people seek to manipulate us and to change our opinion. And instead, we draw closer to the one who can give us guidance, even in difficult times. Jude is likely written by one of the brothers of Jesus. Jude and James are mentioned. And you wonder why Jude doesn't mention his link to Jesus, but perhaps that's unnecessary. It would have been a thing that everybody knew in the early church. Talk about a tough act to follow. I can't imagine what it was like being one of the brothers of Jesus trying to do something in the church in those days. Um, yeah, there would have been a certain expectation, I guess, about how they behaved and what they did. And yet, after the resurrection, they understood what they had experienced in their life with Jesus before, with their family life. Um, the Gospels indicate that prior to the, the resurrection, there was uh, great concern by Jesus' family that he'd somehow lost his wits. And now, after, after the resurrection, Jude and James join the work of the church and they become pillars for Jewish Christianity in Jerusalem and in Palestine. And this letter, where we aren't exactly sure who it's addressed to, but all the allusions to Old Testament and Old Testament apocryphal materials seem to indicate they were people really familiar with the story of the faith. So Jude continues in the family, and he does so because of what the resurrection has show, shown him. We are people who have been given new life, who have a hope for this world and the world beyond. We are people who have been encouraged by God's word to us in the person of Jesus Christ. And in that encouragement, we continue to find new hope. The resurrection changes the way things look for us. And even as deception and error and false teaching work their way into the modern consciousness and into the civil religion of the country, at the same time, we know there is a triumph. And as we lean into the resurrection, may we find new ways to be God's faithful people people that cast aside those things that seem so attractive that the world throws up for us, and people instead that follow the way that Christ has shown us. All praise and thanks to God.
To God be the glory. Amen. Let us affirm our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we come to our prayers today, we do have these prayer requests. Uh, there's a prayer request for Shirley Scott's daughter, Susie, who is recovering following surgery. Uh, prayers for the safe travel and successful trip of the prospective associate pastor candidate will be coming from New Orleans New Orleans, and will be visiting in person here at West uh, Minster this coming weekend. And then we have this anonymous request, prayers to a friend who had successful surgery for her cancer. Now prayers for her quick recovery. We continue to think of all those impacted by the recent hurricane and uh, we pray for their recovery and uh, pray for all those who are uh, assigned the, the duty of making sure the country helps out those in such circumstances. With these concerns in mind, let us come to God in prayer. Let us pray. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God with us yesterday, today, and forever. In our pilgrimage on the way to unity, Christ our peace, walk beside us. Open our eyes, open our hearts to your presence among us. We thank you for those who have gone before us, martyrs who have suffered for their faith, and all your servants who live now and forever in the light of the risen Christ. We pray for this country and for this region, for the churches all around the world who gather in your name. We thank you for our baptism in Christ in whom we are one. May it encourage us to witness together to your word and to your presence today and tomorrow. We pray for those who work for the unity of your church here and through all the world, and all who never cease to pray. Gracious God, make us one. Lord, make us one in our faith, our witness, and our work, that our witness may be more convincing, that our service may be more effective, that one day we may join you as your one people at your one table. We pray for those who are discouraged and left behind by life who have no hope and nothing to hope for. We pray for those who live in fear, who suffer violence in their own homes and do not know where to turn. We pray for those who live in the midst of plenty and yet find no meaning in their lives. 
We pray for those facing death and for those who mourn. Make us instruments of peace, agents of reconciliation and justice, and bearers of your hope. And now, as our Savior has taught us, we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we pause to offer ourselves to God, to think about our contributions to the work of this congregation and the work of Christ church as a whole, as uh, we reflect on the many ways that God has blessed us. Let us now offer our gifts to God. God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Christ all people here below. Praise Holy Spirit evermore. Praise triune God whom we adore. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the many signs of your goodness. We seek your blessing on what we offer this day, on our gifts and talents, on our treasure and time. Bless us. Bless the gifts we offer and bless the work of this congregation. It is in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. My faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Now Gaze in part 
whose dark maze I tread and griefs around me spread. Be thou my guide, bid darkness turn to day, wipe sorrow's tears away. No, let me ever stray from thee. Life's swift race is run, death's cold work almost done. Be near to me, blessed Savior, then in love, fear and distrust remove. Oh, bear me safe above, redeemed and free. Go forth in the name of the Lord, and this is God's charge, to trust in Jesus Christ and to love one another as he commanded. Now to the one who is able to keep you from falling and to make you stand without shame in the presence of God's glory with rejoicing. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time, and now and forever. Amen.